hello. Men in the room, if you don't know Gordon, meet him. You need to know him. He's amazing. He is amazing. Isn't he? He is. He's I magical. Know. I know. Magical. Magical unicorn with a long beard. All right. I'm Suzanne Taylor King, and I am your host for Coach Conversations. This is a two-year-old, once-a-month community where we have the conversations that coaches should be having but aren't having on social media. So we come together in this room and have candid, real conversations. And to make it even better, we need your participation. So tonight's going to be super interactive. We might even do some fun breakout rooms to go a little deeper. Uh, but first, we're going to go around the room and do a quick 10-second intro, who you are, what type of coach you are, and what type of clients you serve. And absolutely, please put your contact information in the chat. Use this as a connecting space as well. And then we will get the party started with Michelle. I'm going to start on my upper right tonight with Judy Kane. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, so I am Judy Kane. My business is Aligned Consciousness, and I help people take out their head trash. I serve as a resource to coaches to help them get their clients past those barriers, keeping them stuck in the coaching programs. Awesome. Great to have you here. Thanks, uh, from Ma Mount Sajad, Sajad Hussein. I live on a mountain. I'm so happy. And what type of coach are you, sir? I'm not a coach. I'm a personal trainer. I beat people. Oh, awesome. You beat you beat out their head trash or or what? You work with Judy? I don't want to get sued. Okay. I work with like um hot chicks, old white men, and Japanese guys. Nice. Okay, perfect. Well, welcome. Excited to have you. Uh and let's go to the Japanese guy, Jeff. Hey everybody, my name is Jeff Sarah and I'm a self-development sensei and a Reiki practitioner and I support people who don't know how they're getting in their own way, but they do know that they are. Former client of Sajad who supported me with a lot of things. Nice. <laughs> well, welcome. Susie Taylor. Hi everybody, how you doing? I am not a coach. However, I serve coaches. So I help coaches uh, write copy for their websites, develop email sequences and social media posts and uh, help you help other people. That's how I change the world is to help you help other people. Beautiful. So you're going to have to lead one of these conversations with me one night. Let's talk about that and awesome. put a date on the calendar. How's that sound? Awesome. Awesome. Drew, welcome, my new friend, who I was just on his incredible podcast last week. Hello, hello, STK. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Drew Durney, uh, company is Profit Compassion. I'm leading the Mindful Man movement. So you know how men are expected to suck it up, man up, not show emotions or ask for help and just get it done? Well, what I do is I help men stop their self-destructive behavior. It's the number one roadblock keeping us from reaching our goals. So let's redefine what it means to man up. Let's start writing our own story instead of letting others write it for us. Nice. Well, welcome. Great to have you. Me too. And Mr. Rob Fenstermaker, loving your TikToks, my friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. The Rob Fenstermaker. Uh, so what I do, I empower um, men to break down those walls that are holding them back from the identity, that uh, their false identity, uh, so they can step into their kingdom and start living a life of significance to stop chasing success all the Beautiful. Sarah Regina, welcome. I'm Sarah Regina. I am a content marketing coach, and I help women entrepreneurs um, who feel stuck in their business with their content. Awesome. Welcome. Great to have you. And quick hello to Dr. Dorothy and Karen. Thanks. We're doing introductions, um, who you are and what you do and who you serve. So let's go to Charlotte Barry next. Hi, I'm Charlotte Barry. have the communication advantage and I work with companies that have intergenerational workforces 
to help them improve the communication between employees and managers and executives. Beautiful. Well said. Dono, first time attendee. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Um, I am a career coach. I turn yearnings into earnings. I work with people 45 years old and older because and, ageism is a thing in job search, and I help them overcome that. Beautiful. Great tagline. Well done. Gordon, welcome. Good evening, Suzanne. Uh, Gordon D. Melville from Ontario, Canada, and I am a legacy and resiliency strategist. Um, I'm kind of known as the long bearded guy for some strange reason and the king of EQ. So uh, Drew and I sort of have a similar type mission. So at some point he and I will connect. Sounds like a good pairing, you two. David George Brook, where I don't know why we haven't started calling you D G B yet well, to go with the S T K. Because you're SDK, of course, um, but DGB, David George Brook, that gratitude guy, Seattle, Washington. I help with my workshops and keynotes and my coaching clients for them to infuse their lives with gratitude so they can be happier, healthier, and lighter. Beautiful. Chella. I'm following our buddy, David. Uh, Chella, guiding uh, self guiding women entrepreneurs to increase their price, enroll new clients, and create the life they desire. I look forward to connecting with you. Beautiful. Share that new online course of yours in the chat, please. Uh, Travis, welcome, first-timer. Oh, you're on mute, Travis. Sorry about that, everybody. There you go. And uh, my company name is Manifesting Consciousness, and I'm a mm -hmm. transformational life coach and an NLP practitioner. I help my clients transcend ego addiction. So that's what I specialize in. I love it. Wonderful. Well, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, David Visco. Hey, everybody. David Visco here. I am a profit acceleration coach. So what's that mean? I find the hidden profits in service-based businesses, and I do it with a proven and empathetic approach. A little difference there. And yeah, that's what I do. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Welcome. Great to see you twice in one day. Uh, Dan Andrews. Trying to find the mute button, gang. Daniel Andrews, I help people stop networking and start building business relationships that matter and pay off. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, welcome. Benita, another first timer. Great to meet you last week. Welcome. Same here, Suzanne. Thank you for the invite. My name is Benita Williams. I'm the self-care surgeon. I help women in leadership revive so they can thrive in purpose, not just on purpose, but in purpose. Beautiful. Well, welcome. Great to have you. Dr. Dorothy Martin-Neville, welcome. It's so great to be here, darling, to join you. All righty. I am Dr. Dorothy Martin Neville, and I work with um, executive CEOs who are at a level of trying to redefine their vision, find out who they are, what they are doing, and where they perhaps got lost on the journey to success. Bring them back so that they can bring passion and joy back into the work, as well as their physical health. I only work with folks who are at a level that they can well afford somebody who brings a lot to the table. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Karen, welcome. Hi, um, I am a health optimization coach. Um, I, along with my partner, Ryan McQueen, work with... Um, career driven people who have realized at some point that their health has not been their priority and they're now ready to really recommit to themselves. And so um, he's 37, I'm 66 and we span all the generations. We uh, love to work with people who say, I've been around the block a hundred times or people have said, I've been on a diet for 60 damn years. Mm -hmm. um, 
I can't make progress. And we're like, yes, you can. And it has to do with accountability. It has to do with love. It has to do with strength training. And it has to do with belief in one's self that it is possible. And you know, one just quick thing I'll say is Ryan and I were talking about this today. You know, when you're 55, the probability that you're going to say, I'm going to start playing basketball. I need to get shoes. I need to figure out how to play. Probably low. The probability that you're going to pick anything that fits right in there, right? Like, are you going to do that? The good chance of that is probably no. But could you strength train? Could you pick up a barbell? Could you get plates? Could you have dumbbells? And I know, yeah, we've talked about this ourselves, you and I, how important it is to allow yourself to be that athletic person that everybody actually has inside them. And that's really where we see the magic happen for people, especially those who have never done this. And they grow in such confidence because they now have these skills that they didn't even know that were possible and they have doors open to them that they now feel like they can step through. It's Beautiful. great. Nothing like a good burpee to clear your mind. Uh, <laughs> all right. And last but not least, uh, my podcast producer extraordinaire, Jason Croft. <laughs> That's I'm having my name legally changed to that next week. So oh, that's perfect. Podcast producer Jason, extraordinaire. Oh uh, yeah. Nice. Jason Croft. I'm in Colorado. I empower expert coaches and consultants to build a video visibility platform, usually in the form of a video podcast to grow their reach and have clients coming to them. Beautiful. Now you can see why I hired him and we are four episodes in Daniel Andrews was just on last Friday. Um, so if there's a coach or a consultant in this room who would like to have a conversation on that show, let's talk about it. And if you're brave enough to be coached live on the air, let's talk about that too. All right. Now I'm STK. I'm your host for Coach Conversations. I'm a business coach and a strategist for entrepreneurs looking to go to that next level. So if you're making $100,000 a year and you're bored and you're working too much, it's time to reinvent what you're doing. And I want to have a conversation with you. That's me. All right, let's get into it, Michelle. Who are you? What do you do? And what are we talking about tonight? Well, I am Michelle Lee. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I am a certified coach and trainer, and I work with people on optimizing their business, maximizing their results with selling authentically and being able to connect with the person across from them faster, skyrocketing their results and transforming their lives. Beautiful. Well, how amazing is it to truly be able to build rapport quickly, authentically from a truly heart-centered place with another person. So everybody in this room is connected to me by either first, you know, I met you or you met me because of somebody else in this room. Think about that. Think about how you got to me. It's typically from being connected to someone else in this room. And we can trace those things back. Um, Daniel Andrews, he talked about that spider web of connection. You know, I met Sajad and therefore met, you know, 20 other people that he was connected to, which that brought me to Michelle, that introduced me to Rob, that introduced me to who else in this room? Don. Amazing, right? So let's get into that. Michelle, what does that look like to be able to connect with people on a deeper level faster? What does that do for your business, number one? It skyrockets your business right now. They're saying it's like 12 to 20 touches mm -hmm. to even convert someone or connect with that person because people are getting flooded with all of these different things. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if the person sitting across from you is your perfect client or your perfect connector. 
-hmm. If you don't connect with them and you aren't able to communicate with them in a way that brings you two together and you're both seen, heard, and understood, then you're just wasting your time and spinning that hamster wheel. Truly. Anybody have anything that they want to add to that? What has connecting authentically done for your business? Daniel, I know you have something to say about that. Yeah, it, people uh, miss, people are visual. We see what's in front of us. We're aware of our first degree connections. And we miss the fact that when we connect authentically and build trust with our first degree connections, we now have access to their entire network, the people that trust them and that they trust. And it's hard to see because we don't know what those people are. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they look like. We don't know what roles they have, but they exist. And because we're visual creatures, we think about, oh, I don't want to join another community and meet a whole bunch more people. You don't have to. You can get to multiple communities and multiple networks by building your network with a couple dozen people. You have access to their complete networks, their complete networks, and their complete networks. So if you can take faith in the fact that the math holds and understand that it's your vision thinking that's keeping you from seeing what's possible, there's some very fantastic opportunities out there. It's faster than marketing, believe it or not. Faster than, faster than marketing. Michelle, speak to that. So yes. I love I love what Daniel said because he's spot on. And what happens is not only do people not look outside that box in the networking world, but when you're meeting with people, we show up assuming that that person likes and thinks just like we do. <laughs> and so what happens is we like we give them the information that is not even comprehensible to them. Mm -hmm. They see us as dolphins weeks. It's like, I have no idea what this person's even talking about. And I'm not excited at all. Right. So being able to look at the person across from you, speak to them in their core values, what is important to them. When you meet people that you automatically connect with your core values align and you're like, yes, this is my person. I just met them like a minute ago, but like, I'm going to go have a drink with them because they're awesome. Mm -hmm. Five minutes later, you meet someone else and you're like, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. not feeling it. Mm -hmm. When every single human doesn't matter how they're wired is important. They all bring something to the table. But because they aren't like us, some people automatically write them off and they're like, yeah, nah, I'm just going to chuck them, right? But when you open your mind up and you start to see the world in a different perspective, you can come together with everyone. It's going to lead you to more connections. It's going to lead that, you to more relationships, more sales. Everything's going to happen faster. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, truly. Uh, Heather just joined us. Heather, hello. Uh, give us your 10 second, who you are and what you do. 10 seconds. I'm Heather Wyatt. I just moved to Costa Rica recently and I've pivoted my business to holding retreats and creating them for others. Yes, which she's going to be creating for STK in 2024. So welcome, Heather. Great to see you. Great to see you. All right. Um, Michelle, I, I think where I'd love to go with this idea is how, how do we really build that quicker with people? Now, of course, you have your system. I'd love you to share a little bit about that. But what does that look like, you know, on a moment by moment basis? How do we embrace this connecting on a deeper level at a mass scale. You know, that's the issue I see for most people. They go to a networking event, whether it's a room like this, you know, full of this many people, and they say, oh my gosh, I have to connect with all of these people. I have to meet all of these people. I have to email them all, message them all. And that gets overwhelming and they don't do it. So what's the secret there? So the secret is, is that 
taking that first step and connecting with the people in the group. When you're in these different networking groups, you're there to meet people. So that's your goal, but focus on them. So what happens is a lot of times everybody goes into these networking groups and then they reach out to all these people and then they bombard them with their sales pitch, right? Mm -hmm. And now they've cut off like 75% of the people. Some of them will meet with them. But if you focus on the other person sitting across from you and make it about them, like who do you want to meet? Be intentional with what you do. Who on this call do you want to meet? Whether you have synergy to collaborate or you, they could be your perfect referral partner or your perfect client or whatever it is, but be intentional about what you're doing. Don't just throw a bunch of spaghetti noodles at the wall. Yeah. Well, that I, I heard today, I have a very close connection who basically does uh, um, outreach for people. So he, he's got an agency and he does outreach for people on LinkedIn, um, marketing, basically looking for your ideal client, messaging them, getting them on your calendar. It's lead gen, but it's, it's very classy lead gen. He's not doing it anymore because it doesn't work anymore. So I was kind of shocked because that was his whole business model for years and years and years. And when we had a conversation, he said, I couldn't go on contributing to something that isn't working to, to send a hundred messages and get one response is not marketing. I'm so glad you brought that up because I work with a lot of people who are LinkedIn experts and do cold messaging. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. I run their messaging through the AI and here's what's happening. Their first message goes out. There's four different personality types, right? So you should have all four covered. But what happens is their first one is nurturing, typically. So they leave the other three out. They send out a nurturing email because they're trying to capture that emotional connection where people are like, oh my God, somebody wants to be my friend. They want to mm -hmm. connect with me. Oh, this is so well. Yes, I'm going to connect with them. And then they follow it up typically with this knowledge, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. then they just spit a bunch of data onto them. It's like they just threw a grenade into their, into their, their cold lead. Boom. And they blow it up. Some people will unfriend them, unfollow them. And that's what happens in that whole cold email, cold messaging area. They're going in with one language. They're leaving the other three out and then they're bombarding them with something else. Mm. It's like a slap to the face. So whether they're doing cold marketing, cold leads, you figure, look at all the people, look at all the DMs you've gotten in the last month. It's overwhelming, but there's a way to make your marketing and yourself stand out, whether you're speaking, emailing, messaging, if you want to have a bigger impact, then you need to speak the language of the people. And there's four different people you need to reach. And if you know who they are, then that's when you get exceptional results. Truly. I, I'd love to hear for some voices in the room about just the sheer volume of messages you get on either LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and tell me if you ever respond to any of them and actually work with that person. Raise your hand. Do you respond? Let me know. Go ahead, Jeff. I will typically respond and send my calendar link, which has a questionnaire. More often than not, I get those people filling it in blank or going N-A-N-A-N-A. -N -N -A -N -A, mm -hmm. And I automatically cancel those because they're just going to pitch me and they give no shit about who I am. Yeah, exactly. You too, Susie? 
Yeah. Um, I, the people who, who contact me and say, I, I see you're a writer. Uh, let me check out your, your website for you. Let me give you some ideas. Let me give you whatever. Those are the folks that, you know, I, I, I make my own ideas. I get my own ideas. Um, the people who contact me and say, I see you're a writer. I'd really like to learn more about what you do and how you do that. Those are the people I respond to. Well, that's, that's typically not someone looking to sell you their lead gen services or their marketing services or, um, Judy. Yeah. I also look at the, how they think they know me or if they think they know me. Right. And, and that'll make a difference, um, in whether I accept their request or not. Yeah. Well, I, I think somebody who knows somebody I know is is easy. That That's easy for me to say yes to. But it it's the ones that are obviously automatic to me um, because they're saying, they're quoting something from my link. They picked it up a keyword on my profile on LinkedIn that's 15 years old. And I'm like, huh, I haven't done that in 15 years. I haven't owned that company in 15 years. It's funny that you mentioned that. Um, so those are an automatic no for me. Dorothy. Um, I was going to say that most of those it, it have no clue anyway. You know, they'll write to me and say, I live in Texas also. And I'm thinking, sweetheart, I've been in Texas twice for about two days, and that was plenty. Thank you for sharing. So clearly, you haven't done a lot of research. What I also get now is a number of folks who get send me emails who want to contribute to my website. They want to put an article on my website. They want to add this on my website. And it's, to me, the audacity. So it's, and I don't have, and I don't, let me change that. I don't choose to spend the time mm -hmm. to answer all of these folks who yeah. send me the DMs or to answer all of these emails to me. I have way too much going on in my life to waste an hour to two sending folks, no, thank you, no, thank you, no, thank you. Um, so it's simply, unfortunately, it's just click. It's just delete, delete, because we don't, if you're busy, you don't have the time to waste dealing with folks who never should have contacted you in the first place. You know, if somebody says STK suggested I call you, well, then, sweetheart, you got to call. All right. But if it's just a stranger, there's not a chance. There's not a chance, especially when they don't have a clue who you are. I love that. They don't have a clue who you are. So, Michelle, what helps us have a clue who people are? Well, the bank system helps tremendously know who they are and what's important to them and how you can actually meet them where they are. Yeah. Right. And so I talked to a client today and his perfect avatar is his complete opposite code. For those of you who don't know what bank code is, it's predicts buying behavior in less than 90 seconds and buy in behavior tells people where they're what the, what happens when they get stressed out what they stay away from and how they make their decisions based on their core values so it unlocks the key to humans so i'm talking to him and he his linkedin profile decode his linkedin profile and it's his opposite code he's like well do you think i should market it that way or should i market it more on who I am. Mm. I said, you want to market it to your avatar. Your avatar is nurturing knowledge, blueprint, action. He was completely opposite of that. I said, no, but here's the problem. If you're marketing to your exact opposite communication style, right? Then when they get on the call with you, they're expecting to be talking to someone just like them. But what happens is you drop a grenade on top of them, because now you're coming at them, AK action knowledge where you're like, but they can't even keep up with what you're talking about. And now you've completely blown up that sale. So that's what happens in the sales process and in the marketing end of it and how you're showing up on social media, how you're showing up in the world. 
that's how it all blows up. Yeah. He likes go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Michelle. No, go ahead. I was going to say, um, welcome, welcome, Chris Colt. Great to have you. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's take some questions from the room about connecting with whether it's somebody from a networking group or for instance, somebody new that you want to meet. And then I'm going to pick Jason's brain because he's really, really good at connecting with a stranger that he wants to attract to his podcast or, you know, to be in his world. I've learned some amazing things from him. So let's take some questions in regard to that. What do you want to know about connecting with a stranger and what that looks like? How do you do it right? I'll start it out. First, All a right. compliment, compliment for Michelle. Uh, her software works. I've known her for a few years and I can actually read people's codes now without, well, for the most part, without them going through the process because I've gotten so used to blueprint, action, nurturing, knowledge. Um, so a lot of people are afraid of rejection. And I tell them DM 90 people per week on LinkedIn. And then they don't do it because they don't like the rejection part. So how can this help people deal with rejection or face less rejection? Ad. You have this ad, not DM. What? We add 90 people, not DM 90 people. All okay. right. So, all right. So, so we can't even connect with 90 people. Right. They're afraid to do that. So I wanted to say two things here. One, I want to answer your questions to Jod, right? Most of the people that you attract are high nurturing. They want, they're people pleasers. They want people to like them. They don't want to offend people. They don't want to be hurt or rejected. What? Suzanne's like, what? what? Okay. No. Second piece of this that I want to add is Jeff is nurturing knowledge. High knowledge people, when you make a mistake or you say something wrong, will point it out to you. Even if you're on a call with 20 people and say you're wrong. This is what it was. This is what you make us do. They're not doing it to be an asshole. They're doing it because their brain literally split and they said, wait, that's not right. That's wrong. That's not the right answer. So just so you know, they're not doing it to offend you. <laughs> they're just doing it because that's their wiring system. So Jeff, thank you for that. I love that. I love that we were a walking, breathing example for everyone. All right. Jeff, any Jeff, Jeff and I set that up earlier tonight for you guys. <laughs> you guys are the best. Yeah. All right. Hit me with your, your questions about connecting with a stranger, and then we're going to get some tips from Jason. Don, Don Owen right. had his hand up. Okay. I was, I was just going to ask, who is it that thinks that Sajad is a nurturer? I mean, there is no way in God's green earth. Yep. I'm sorry. I, I, I tease. I tease. I do. That man cared more about my business than I did when we met. So he has a huge heart. He won't admit it, but he does. Don't give away his secrets about his heart. I'm sorry. Call, Jeff, please. <laughs> John's the best. Go ahead, Heather. So I know I came in late, so I missed part of this. So that's on me. But I feel like you guys are saying a little bit of different things. So Jod's saying, go out there, just connect with people who cares if they don't accept. That's more my style. And some of you guys are saying, no, you have to care about who the person is and all of this. That's great. But I think, you know, I buy like I buy and I connect the way I connect. Mm -hmm. Like Dr. Dorothy said, like, I don't have time for all that. Like, especially when you're going the roundabout route, just be direct. If you want to connect, I'm going to check out your profile. If I think you're interesting, I'll do it. I would rather that give you a quick accept or deny rather than you wasting my time commenting on all of my posts, kissing my ass for a while, 
only for it to go nowhere. It's just, yeah. it's, that, it's a time suck. So I don't know about what that middle ground is. How do we approach it? Do we just keep going with so, it or know how our person responds that we're trying to connect with? I feel like that would be the best thing. So can I answer that, Suzanne? Yeah. And then I'll answer. Absolutely. Okay. So Heather, one thing before you got on, what, what I do is I show people how to predict buying behavior in less than 90 seconds and then communicate with that person across from them. Reason Sajad's program works so well is for a couple of reasons. And one I'm going to mention is that I told you he attracts a lot of nurturing. When people are high nurturing, they're people pleasers and they don't want to get rejected. So by him getting them to tap into their action piece of their code, it gives them the ability to break free of what's holding them back. So by him going on them and saying, do this, do this, do this, go out and do the thing. Don't think, don't do this, don't do that. Follow my program and go out there and DM or whatever, Jeff, <laughs> as many people as you have to in a day it breaks them out of this piece that's holding them back. Does that make sense? Yeah. Every single, the way people are wired, every person can take action. It's just they have certain things that hold them back in their wiring system because action may be last. If action's first, they go full speed ahead. Mm -hmm. And it gives them the ability to know, hey, this is where I need to be. Like, I will literally go and pretend I'm blueprint for a freaking year to tap into the tools that I need to, to be successful. And Sajad's program helped with that as well. Tapping into that blueprint piece that I'd rather throw in the toilet. Right. And I would, I would add Heather and that, I think this goes for everyone. You have to know why you're connecting with people. Um, is the person a good fit for doing a retreat with you? Is the person a good fit as a partner for you? Is the person a good fit uh, for a client, for, for Jeff or Dorothy? Um, and what's the intention behind the connection? I reach out to people who I admire, who's who have written a book, that I love, or I reached out to somebody today who has the number one marketing podcast. Well, my, my reason for reaching out is having him as a guest on my show and secretly I want to be on his, right? So my intention is to build a relationship with him so that he wants to have me on his show not to sell him my coaching. So I think that's important for us all to know what your intention is for. And, you know, it's taken me a year sometimes to, you know, have that intention actually happen with somebody that I wanted to meet. All right, let's go to Jason and get some, get some tips. Well, I have a, a quick question for Michelle first. Yeah, sure. Um, when it comes to just exactly this example and, you know, knowing the different types and I'm this way, and this is what I lean into. Do you ever coach people to sort of call that out? If you will, like, Hey, this is, I'm an action taker. I'm a knowledge. I'm a, you know, from, from this system. And, you know, I may do this, my apologies. I've had someone, you know, a good friend of mine now who's been on the show, he's autism. He was nonverbal till age 11, like he's developed those things and he's very forthright in the very beginning. And then multiple times during communication to say, by the way, if I'm correcting you, it's, it's only because I care. And I want, you know, like he, he calls us out. I, he brings out his nerve. Do you ever coach people to sort of be open with their type as they communicate with somebody who's different? Correct. So yes. And that's the goal, right? So everybody's all four. Every single human is made up of all four and you can tap into any one of them whenever you need to. So when people go through our coaching program or our trainings, they actually build up the other pieces that might be a weakness. So they can tap into those other codes. The point of it is, is to be able to communicate and connect 
with every person that you meet, regardless of their code Mm -hmm. and be able to take those relationships to the next level. Like this actually, my, me and my son would not have a relationship if it weren't for this because he is, uh, so my oldest son is on the spectrum. His code is BK. He's a head code. He doesn't have the emotional piece. It's tossed away, right? I'm AN, KB. I'm emotional. I live in the emotional piece of it. So when I would try to hug him or tell him I loved him, he would crush my soul because I'd be like, oh my God, he doesn't want to hug. If I tell him I love him, he gets all angry and pissed off and I'm blaming it on myself. Like, why do you hate me? Why, why am I not a good mom? Like, what did I do wrong? It had nothing to do with me. It had to do with how he was wired. So if you look at for 18 years, I couldn't figure out my own child, even though I knew everything about them. And you go into the business world and you look at your sales and you look at your prospects and the people sitting across from you, how the fuck are you supposed to connect with them Mm -hmm. if you don't know who they are? Otherwise, you're just throwing everything in the wind and you're just playing that sales is a numbers game. I'm just going to keep going. Nothing's intentional. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing over and over again and hoping for different results. If you want different results, change it. Figure out who's in front of you. Awesome. And Jason, I, I hope it. I answered your question. <laughs> no, I dig it. It's good, good stuff. Yeah, Jason, do you want to you want to share some of your um, and then we'll go to you, Rob and Drew, some of your wisdom about uh, how you are such a good connector with not only other people connecting, but with a stranger out there, you know, on the internet. Um, You're, you're making really- me sound very creepy right now. This is no. <laughs> lurking in the bushes. Not LinkedIn. like that. No, not like that. <laughs> not like that. Hey, you want to connect? <laughs> because of his hair, which he can't, he's not showing us now. Yeah. That's right. It's kind of like hair. operating kind of Look, crazy. Look, it even though, looks so, good yeah. when you take the hat off. That's <laughs> That's that's the whole rest. That's just what I wanted to do. That's why the hat tonight. Uh, yeah. So I'm always looking for the I don't know the end. The what is that connection point? Because what I'm always guarding against is that you know Heather talked about it right. Just that the natural thing is this right when you're like okay, what do you want? Where does it? You know, let's get to it. Just tell me what you know, <laughs> and just getting through that piece because. I usually am, yeah, they may be a good client, but I usually am like just wanting to have that first connection, that first conversation to see if, is there even anything there? Part of that comes from just wanting to do it, enjoying the heck out of it, right? Like I get energy from talking and connecting to people, but then I'm always looking for that, for that end or in to have that connection point to just let them know as soon as possible Hey, I got nothing to sell you at the moment. <laughs> you know, I may, but you know, like I genuinely say, Hey, let's just, you know, connect or whatever without, you know, hiding from the the business aspect, especially if it's on LinkedIn, like, yeah, we're here to do, here to do business and here's what could work. Um, but like Daniel's talked about, it may be, Hey, you're a perfect strategic partner for, for me and vice versa, you know, maybe something like that. And then of course I use and recommend that people use something like a show, you know, podcast like that to me has been the greatest network building tool for the last eight years or so. I mean, down to dear friends I still have today because they were on the show and we've linked up, we've stayed in touch and that, you know, connection there. And that's what I'm always looking for is that I can give right away. If I'm inviting somebody on the show to be on and just have that first conversation, they get something right away from, Hey, here's this piece of content. You can go use this. Even if, there is no connection here, then usually there is something and we can kind of build from there. Yeah. I I like that you, you know, and of course I'm following, I'm, I'm following your lead on this is that the, the value of the conversation on the podcast, you know, cause it's human to human and there's, there's no sales in that conversation, but yet you're, you're having this relationship or 
uh, mutual admiration for the person that you're talking to and you're adding value to them and they're doing the same for you. So it really, um, I think it can advance your thought leadership in a really great way. Yeah. And, and that piece too, structuring it so that, you know, it's, it's, it's two peers having a conversation, no mm-hmm. matter if you're inviting on that marketer, you know, with the number one marketing podcast, that guy coming on, you know, it's still two peers having a conversation about this core topic and that core topic, you know, and then you'll get into what they're all about, of course, because you're shining a spotlight on them. But it's really important that that dynamic is there, that it's not just, oh, you're the great, you know, for an hour. And it's really two, two experts having that conversation. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's take some questions. Rob. I don't really have a question. I just kind of want to, you know, piggyback on what a lot has been said here. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of gone multiple ways as far as trying to, you know, build my business. I mean, originally, I, you know, what John said, I would just send out as many connection requests I had, but I had no strategy with them once they'd come in. Then I kind of do, well, let me try and nurture them and see if I can get them that way. And that, that was a waste of time. And now I'm just, I have a, 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 a way I'm doing it, but I'm, you know, sending out the, you know, the multiple connections requests each week. And trying to get them into my ecosphere and then trying to communicate with them somehow. And I'm also very active on, you know, the content I put out. So they see who I am. I'm very intentional about who I am. I mean, what you see is what you get. And, you know, I know some people will say, man, you're a little too aggressive for me. You're not for my cup of tea. That's fine. Hey, you know, we're, you know, it's okay. Just, just page on by. Um, but I, I want them to see who I am at least and then try and build it that way. Um, and, you know, I, I can meet them where they're at as well. Um, but, you know, that's probably one struggle I have maybe a little bit is trying to figure out exactly, um, you know, what is best for them and, and if we would work together um, in a business relationship. Okay. And Rob, keep in mind, a lot of struggles that people have is what they're communicating is crystal clear to them. But the person sitting on the other end has no idea what they're saying. So keep that in mind. It just depends on who's in front of you. Truly. Let's go to Jeff. Yeah, like to your point with that, Michelle, like with communication, what people are saying may not always be what we hear. So what I like to do with my active listening is I'll repeat back to someone what I heard them say and what I'm also hearing them say between the lines. And more often than not, I get a, wow, you get it. And I feel so seen. And people really resonate with that to, to feel like, okay, that message landed or they're appreciative that you communicated that maybe it wasn't off and then they can adjust and make sure that whatever they were trying to say is properly conveyed. That supports with arguments, um, business meetings, discussions, and with networking. So, you know, Daniel Andrews and I like to play a game when we're in a breakout room together, like, I'll introduce him and he'll introduce me to make sure we know what each other does. And then it's a good way to, you know, build rapport with the other people in that room to be like, Hey, these people know each other. They're on good terms, et cetera, et cetera. So it creates kind of a a sense of acceptance, no matter what situation you're in. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Let's go to Drew. So I've, uh, you know, Michelle's helped me a lot. I've used the bank system. And one of the things that I started doing shortly after we're working together was, uh, storytelling is so powerful and using the bank system i've been able to to determine if i should tell my story first or allow the other person Mm -hmm. to tell their story first and you know the nurturers usually will tell their story first and and some of the others wouldn't so if i lead with the right person my story and uh, kind of breaks down walls um the question i have for michelle there are a lot of competitors to bank and there's a big difference in bank from all the other competitors. I'm not going to name those competitors, but you tell me, because you taught me, of the one of the bigger competitors, what is the biggest unique difference, the differentiator between bank and that other acronym? So if you line them up and you line up the acronyms, they're exactly the same, mm-hmm. only completely different. And the reason they're completely different is the other ones are based in psychology. This is not based in psychology, which is why it works. It's based in biology, B-U-I-ology. 
What drives a yes? Why do people buy? It doesn't matter if they're an introvert or an extrovert. None of you would guess that I'm an introvert, would you? And even if you looked at my bank code, you would not assume that I'm an introvert, but I am. So when you understand someone's buying behavior, their buy-in behavior, and what drives them as a human being, and what's important to them based on core values, then you unlock the secret. Thank you, Drew, for that fantastic question. Great question. So, John. I only have four thoughts. Oh, I'm surprised it's only four. It's usually six. Uh, to Jason Croft inspired thought, um, qual asking qualified questions on your calendar would get rid of a lot of horrible people. Uh, the three questions to ask it definitely is, what is their current status? What barriers are they facing? And what does outrageous success look like for them? So if people have to answer nine questions, which you can do for free on Calendly, you'll get rid of a lot of people. If they put NA or leave it blank, that'll save you a ton of time. Uh, Mike Rukulin gave me this quote or this acronym called CRAP, C-R-A-P. Uh, beware of collaborations, referral deals, affiliate deals, and partnerships. Normally, that's poor people talking to other poor people, trying to sound like they're cool. Affiliate deal normally means somebody wants you to sell their shit for them. Michelle gave me some advice uh, a month ago on I was struggling between not charging for the 30 minute meeting with me and charging for it. And she gave me the idea of doing a uh, refundable deposit. So I'm charging a hundred dollar refundable deposit through Stripe, which Suzanne set up for me. And I've had three meetings in the past 30 days and two of the three have hired me. And then I had one guy DM me a couple days. Yeah, that was you, Michelle. A couple days ago, a guy DM'd me and said, I want to meet with you, but I don't have a hundred dollars. I said, that's okay. I'm going to give you the hundred dollars back. He said, I don't have a hundred dollars. I said, you should attend my free events. I don't need to meet with people that don't have a hundred dollars. Okay. The kissing of the frogs. I think that's what it's called. A lot of people want to skip steps in their business. Everybody wants to only talk to qualified leads. You can't do that until you're me or Suzanne where you're rich and famous. So you can't skip the steps of meeting with a bunch of fucking idiots. You have to meet with as many people as possible, make yourself famous until you get to a certain point. And, and you know, what I teach my clients is meet with 12 people a week. That's 48 people per month. You land three to five deals at 5,000 each. You're making 5,000 to or 15,000 to 25,000 a month, right? 48 people, three to five deals, but you can't skip the steps and everybody wants to skip the steps. Uh, real quick. Um, so if the person is not in front of you is not a potential buyer, you still want to pitch them, which means to tell them concisely and clearly what you do. Otherwise, they can't refer you. There's a reason why 30% of this room is former clients of mine. Uh, okay. I, I have an event tomorrow called Polarizing Networking, 9.50 a.m. Central. It's extremely fucking offensive. And Suzanne and Michelle are sponsors of it because they're not just hot chicks. They're also brilliant. <laughs> I I want to share one thing that the kissing the frogs piece that practice practice at this is really key. Um, you know, there's a 10,000 hour hour rule for a reason. Uh, 10,000 hours practicing something makes you an expert or a master at that thing. Once you've connected with 10,000 people and you've had 10,000 conversations, don't you think you're going to be good at it? Yes. And one of the most surprising things for me about that, when I realized before I became a coach, I was a dental hygienist. And what did I do for 20 years, every hour for 40 hours a week? New person, new person, new person, new person, conversation, build rapport, make them feel comfortable. Oh, I know how to do this. So I want you to think about how before you did what you do now, what was your experience like meeting people, 
building relationships with people. Maybe you were a teacher, maybe you were, you know, in corporate, maybe you were, you know, a, a greeter at church or something, right? What experience do you have constantly meeting people and connecting with people and, and pull in a little bit of that confidence knowing that you've done this your whole entire life and doing it for business isn't that much different. And Suzanne, can I throw something in here? Absolutely. So let me just give you an example of what happens when you're intentional and you understand someone's bank code. Mm -hmm. Client of mine is in a business for 13 years. Has eh results. In 30 days after learning the bank methodology and going through the coaching program, they increased their sales 400%. 30 days, 400%. They brought in 12 new team members and had three rank advancements. Wow. In the last 60 days, I have not had one no. Not one. Could you imagine with every conversation you have being able to not have a no for 60 days? It's because you're intentional. When you start meeting with people and having those conversations and you understand what's important to them and you can talk to their values, not yours, that's when the magic happens. That's when things go. Whoosh. Beautiful. That's a perfect place to wrap up, Michelle. Um, now, for those of you who have been to my events, before, you know, I love to wrap up with your major takeaway. We're going to go around the room rapid fire and give me your takeaway from tonight. Dr. Dorothy. Um, I loved what Michelle said about, you know, being a psychologist. Um, psychology is phenomenal. However, that's not all there is. There's a whole uh, a lot of other packages out there that just because we know how our mind works doesn't mean we know how it acts. And it's very, very different. And I love the fact that you put those two together. Yeah. Awesome. Daniel Andrews, do you have a takeaway for us tonight? If you can. I, I, I do. Okay. Uh, the people I hang out with are very deep and they lift me up. And it is really nice to see people that have put this much thought in how to connect well, because in usually in a room of this size, very few people have put much thought in how to connect well. And I'm very flattered that Jason Croft is using words like building a network and not network. Because we hang out with you. <laughs> David Visco, takeaway from tonight. Yeah, pretty straightforward. A great reminder to be intentional with my networking and my reach. So thank you for that. Beautiful. Dono. I'm going to uh, steal from Dr. Dorothy and then agree with uh, Michelle that Michelle Lee that, yeah, the emotion always overrides the logic. Beautiful. Gordon, takeaway from tonight. Um. Sometimes they're called shortcuts. I think they're probably pay cuts. That's good. I like that. Karen, take away. I'm fairly new to LinkedIn, and this gives me hope that this could be a good place to, to really connect with people in ways that feel very genuine because I just don't have time for all that nonsense that I hear about and luckily don't have too much showing up at, for me yet. Thank awesome. you. Heather. Yes, I'm going to be mindful to try to make it to some more networking groups that are valuable because I was so turned off. I just shut it all off. Hence my no links for anything because I was uninterested. But this was a really good group and a good conversation. So also hopeful. Awesome. Yeah, this is yes, this and I will say this this is networking if you are connecting intentionally with the people in the room, it's, it's not about, you know, meeting everyone, but the people that are relevant for you. Yes, of course. Um, you always want to do that no matter what rooms you're showing up in. Um, Travis, would you think takeaway from tonight? 
it's it's interesting it's a little different than the way that i have uh, done my business for 26 years so i uh it's just fascinating to hear different people's ways awesome well i have a question so you may ask a question yeah that was killing me intellectually what do you mean travis what what's different uh i have have done many of the things that i heard tonight uh through my years but i um i pretty much i don't i don't go after marketing anymore i i put myself out there with things that i'm about um and they just come so it's it's not a so it's a little i understand uh the process i understand you know why people do it differently and and i've found it more um advantageous to completely let go of the doing of it as far as marketing i just go like i said you just put yourself out there and you attract those people to you that are supposed to be your clients and they just come so that's, that's well, just... you don't know me, but I completely agree with you. I would say that Michelle can show how to attract those people better, but I completely agree with what you're saying. I don't do follow up, I don't chase, I don't pursue, I don't do sales, I do marketing, right? Which is where you're attracting them to you. Michelle's system can show you the posts that blow up, why it's attracting, who it's attracting, and how. Sure. But I completely agree with your system, and I don't agree with the other way that people do things. Yeah, I, the barrage of people cold contacting you that yeah. have no interest in you whatsoever is is tiresome, uh, to say the least. Um, and so I don't participate in that either. And I'm not saying that you guys are. I'm just saying that I don't. I just, it comes. Uh, I give it over and it seems to come my way. The more I surrender it, the, actually the better it seems to go so I, that's I kind of agree I I um and I think that comes with the experience too in the years doing it as well whether you're getting um introductions or referrals or just that nature of attraction marketing consistency breeds that oh oh who is he and what does he do I, I want to book a call, you know, and I totally agree with that. I, I don't go after clients per se, uh, but if there's somebody I want to meet and want to interview, that's different to me. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you have an intention like that, I understand. Yeah. You. And yeah. I've talked to people that way, obviously. And, you know, so I, I, I get it. Um, but I, but I do think that there's a thing that's missed all together that because I've had so many different businesses in my time and uh, you can't make it happen. That's been my biggest takeaway from my life experience is you can't make it happen. The more you try to make it happen, the more it seemed to push it away. Mm. Uh, and, and so I just, you know, surrender thing is a big thing for me anyway. Yeah. That's all. yeah love it. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Sure. Yeah, Susie, pleasure. what was your takeaway tonight? This was just a, a great reminder that we we deal with individuals, with people, not clients, that we're here to make to develop relationships with the people we work with, not to get money from them. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Drew, takeaway. I'm going to say it's not by chance that we're all in the same room together. Um, I know probably 75% of you from other venues, and I'm going to make a, a conscious effort to get to know the other quarter because um, there's a reason why we're here. So thank you, Suzanne, for assembling. You're welcome. This. You're welcome. Rob, take away. Well, you know, it's, it's just kind of reiterating. If, if you want to make that connection with somebody, an authentic connection, you got to meet them where they're at. And, you know, be your authentic self, but meet them where they're at. And it, it, we'll talk about kind of reiterates that. It's... Yeah. Jeff, take away. 
we need a high level of emotional intel uh, <laughs> intelligence to effectively communicate with our potential customers, our networking partners, and anyone that we take the time to meet with so that we're, yeah, saying what we mean and having them hear it. Yeah. Got to know yourself, right? Know yourself so you can know other people. And to quote Sajad, take yourself outside of yourself to look at yourself. And if your business is not performing the way you want it to, book a conversation with Michelle. If your sales and you're connecting and you're not hitting your numbers or making the money that you want, book a time with Sajad. I'm sure he put the link in, in the chat. And if you're already making the money that you want, and you want to go to the next level, book a call with me. Let's have a conversation. Karen has to go, but can she share her thought? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I already did. I said did. it gives me, gives me hope that there are actually real people on LinkedIn. So I love that. Oh, yeah. Karen, I, I gave you an outline for how it's eight things. I saw I that. I copied I, it. I, I average 27,500 views per day on LinkedIn when I'm not on a lifetime ban. I'm on my fourth lifetime ban right now, but I'm very popular on there. You know, you have an account now, right? That's awesome. I got, I got a bounce. Um, it's been delightful and I look forward to catching up with all y'all. Thanks for joining. Soon. Take care. Bye-bye.